For more information on tutoring or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, please visit MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So in the last video, we mentioned the quantum numbers and what was going on with them. And we specifically mentioned that the angular momentum quantum number L relates to the shape of the atomic orbital. Okay. So we also mentioned specifically that the values of L had a corresponding letter. And each of those letters corresponds to a certain shape. So that's what we're going to go over here. So there's an S orbital, P orbital, D orbital, and F orbital. So let's start off with the S orbital. The S orbital, its shape is spherical. Okay, and that's actually shown over here. We'll get to that in just a second. So its L value is equal to zero, and it's spherical. The probability density is highest near the nucleus because it is a sphere, okay, where the sphere's center is the, is the nucleus. So the possible M sub L values, if we think about the L value, is just zero, which means that there's only one orientation in space. And that makes sense. If you think about holding a sphere in your hand, is there any way that you can kind of flip it or, or hold it in a different position that makes it look like anything different than what it is? It's going to look like a, the same sort of sphere oriented in the same way, no matter how you kind of turn it around. Okay, So there's only one orientation in space for a sphere or the s orbital. Okay, So here I've drawn the basically three s orbitals for the n equals 1, n equals 2, and n equals 3. So the n equals 1 we see here is this um, is represented here by this little red dot. Um, that's just in 2D. Um, so we can see that basically um, the red portion is the area of high probability. Okay. So um, this is specifically the 1s orbital. Okay. So this is the 2D representation. Down here is the 3D representation. And this white outline doesn't mean anything uh, specific. The, the, the outline itself is just um, was just a way for me to sort of depict the shape. So don't think about the white outline meaning anything in specific. It's, it's just like a, if you took a, a sphere like this and you cut a little wedge, like, a, like an orange slice or an orange wedge um, like from the fruit, um, it would look kind of like this. Right? If you cut a fourth of a a fourth of a, an orange right into a little wedge like this, it would look like this. Okay. Now, um, this over here is the 2s orbital, and this over here is the 3s. Now, there's this, uh, you'll notice that there's this space in between the two areas of high probability, right? The two areas of high probability are denoted in red, and the space in between them is an area of actually zero probability. This space in here is a node. This is a node. Right, um, and in the second depiction that's shown here, let's do it. Let's do it in a blue. It's colored in in white. That area there is a node, and that's an area where the probability density actually equals zero. So the probability density at the node equals zero, which means that the electron cannot be located there at all. And that's kind of weird, and we'll get to why that's weird in just a second. So what's important to realize is that. For the 1s orbital, there are no nodes. For the 2s orbital, there's one node. And for the 3s orbital, there are two nodes. There are two regions of zero probability. And we can see that here. There's a node here, right? And there's a node here. Those are both nodes. Okay. And in this here, there's a node there and a node there. Right? Those are nodes. So the number of nodes is just n minus 1. Okay. Now, at the node, we said the electron cannot be there. So if the above statement is true, how is it that an electron can pass from one area of high probability to another? How can that be? If we take an electron, let's imagine an electron right here in this. Oops, that's kind of big. Let's try it. Like in, it's right here, really close to the nucleus, and it needs to go here. How can it go there without passing through that node? Right, or how can how can it go from here into here, or from here to here? How can it do that? Right, it doesn't have to pass through that space. There's no way that it can't pass through that node. So how is it that these nodes have zero probability? Well, thinking about it this way is taking into account the electron an electron's particle nature. But instead, we think about electron an electron's wave nature. An electron's wave nature explains how that can happen. Right. It's it's not you can't imagine it as a particle going from one point to the next. You have to imagine it as a wave being 
being in a certain region and propagating in another region. Okay. So it's kind of weird. Okay. One last thing I wanted to mention is that as we go from n equals 1 to n equals 2 and n equals 3, we can see that um, the electron can be further and further away from the nucleus, right? So again, that just is, is the idea that um, if an electron is further away from the nucleus, it is higher in energy because it doesn't want to be further away from the nucleus. It wants to be closer to that positive charge in the nucleus. Okay, so that's the s orbital. Next up is the p orbital. And that's where the L value equals 1. And the shape of a p orbital is like a dumbbell or a bow tie. So I've kind of drawn both here. Dumbbell, like people use those to lift weights. Um, and a bow tie is kind of drawn like this. So a, a p orbital kind of looks like this. And we'll see how that looks in just a second. Um, its, it's L value is 1, right? Um, so this that's only possible if the n value is equal to or greater than 2, right? There's no 1p orbital. That's not possible because that would mean n equals 1, and you can't have l equal to 1 if n equals 1, right? So the only possible p orbitals are 2p, 3p, 4p, and so on. Okay, you cannot have a 1p orbital. Okay. So the p orbital basically has two lobes that are on either side of the nucleus, and each of those have high probability densities. Okay. The nucleus itself is along the nodal plane. So we don't have just a, a, a region um, that is a node in the, in, the, in the way that we have with the s orbital. We have a plane that the electron cannot sort of lie on. And I'll kind of represent that here. So the possible m sub l values for the p orbital are negative l to l, right? So that would be negative 1, 0, and positive 1, which means that there are three possible orientations in 3D space for the p orbital. Okay, so we have to think about the x, y, and z axes. Okay, so we can think about the p orbital lying on the x on the x axis, on the y axis, or on the z axis. So that's what we'll see here. Okay, so these aren't perfect representations here, but the idea is that there's two regions of high probability on either side of the nucleus. Okay, so the electron can be in either of these lobes. So this one's on the px, this one's on the py, and this one's on the pz. So, the, so they're on the different axes in 3D space. Okay. So in the case of the of the um, the x orbital, the the plane the, the the plane that the y and z axes make is the nodal plane, which means that that's the plane where the electron cannot be located. And in the case of the y, it's the x and z axes that make up the nodal plane. And then in the case of the z, or the pz orbital, where it's al along the z-axis, the xy plane is the nodal plane. So that's kind of represented like this. All right, so this, this, this plane that the y and z axes make is the nodal plane for the px orbital. The py orbital is like this. Its orientation is different, right? And the nodal plane is the xz axis. And then the z uh, the pz orbital has the nodal plane as the xy plane. Okay. So along that nodal plane, the electron cannot lie. Okay. Cool. All right. So next up is the d orbital. Okay. So I'm going to hide that for a second. Let's see what's going on with the d orbitals. The shape of the d orbitals they're clover shaped. Okay, they have like four leaf clovers. Now you'll see a little asterisk next to that, and that's because there's one weird one that's not quite a, a clover shape. So the d orbital's l value is is two, and this, like, this is only possible if the n value is greater than or equal to three. There is no one d orbital, and there's no two d orbital. There's only three d, four d, five d, so on and so forth. Okay. So this is clover shaped, so it's got four lobes. And there's actually two nodal planes, whereas the p orbital had one, one nodal plane, the d orbital has two nodal planes. It was really, really tough for me to kind of represent this in 3D. I'd really encourage you to, to, to uh, do like an image search on Google to find uh, what's going on with these. Uh, with these. I, I try to write my best to represent it, but it's not perfect. So I definitely encourage you to, to Google this. Um, the possible m sub l values here are going to be negative l to positive l. So negative 2 negative 1, 0, 
positive 1 and positive 2. So that's five possible orientations in space. So that's what's shown here. There's going to be a there's going to be a dxy orbital, a dxz, and a dx or dyz orbital, and there's going to be a dx x squared d, uh, y squared orbital and a dz squared orbital. So those are the five different orientations, and they look kind of like this. Okay, little clover shapes. Now my representations are not perfect; they're nowhere near perfect, but they just kind of give you an idea of how these things are shaped. Um, and there are two nodal planes, which I did not show um, because it got really, really messy. But the point is that there are four of them that have this sort of clover shape. There's this one, this one, this one, and this one. This one here is the exception. It's the weird one. Okay. It looks kind of like a P orbital that's surrounded by a donut. <laughs> I mean, that's not really a scientific way to look at it, but that's kind of what it looks like. The point is, though, that it's the exception to the, to the overall shapes. But that's sort of a representation of what's going on with these guys. Four lobes. The f orbital, up next, its L value is 3, and its shape is all kinds of complicated. The, 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 the different f orbitals are crazy. I don't even really know what they look like. Um, I've seen one, but it's, it, the point is that it's crazy. Um, it's only possible if the n value is greater than or equal to 4. So there are no, there are no um, 1f. 2f or 3f orbitals. There's only 4f, 5f, and so forth. Um, the shapes of the f orbital are, like I said, all kinds of complicated. They are multi-lobed. They are multi-lobed and gnarly. Um, the possible m sub l values are negative 3 to positive 3. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. So there are 7 f orbitals, which means there are seven possible orientations in 3D space. So um, I did not sh show a depiction here because the d orbitals were complicated enough, um, and I kind of messed, messed them up. They're not pretty, uh, and I had really did not, I had no chance of depicting an f orbital properly. I'd encourage you to Google image search, though, uh, for better representations of what's going on there. But I hope that video was helpful in providing you some insight as to what is going on with the shapes of these different orbitals. I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you, and happy studying.